Hello, my name is Ioannis Savridis. I'm very honored to be here. I will present the work that we have done with Professor Matala, Professor Estathiu, and Alexander Fosholu, who has a graduate student from Harokopi University of Greece. Part of the data that we will present you uh, derived from my master thesis. The blood of animals is a valuable source of nutrition for many people worldwide. Many nomadic communities use the blood of their cattle, camels, yaks, reindeers, pigs, or geese to supplement their diet. In this situation, animal blood is often used in raw form, but also cooked. It may be consumed as a liquid, solid, or dehydrated. And besides, domesticated animals, wild animals, may also be used to obtain blood. For instance, seal's blood is consumed by Inuits. Blood is a rich source of protein, mainly globulin, albumin, and fibrogen. At the same time, it has a very low fat and carbohydrate content. For instance, 100 grams of pig's blood provide 18.5 grams of protein, 0.1 grams of fat, and 0.6 grams of glucose. In this respect, blood is a rich blood, has a nutrient profile comparable to egg. More importantly, blood <coughs> more importantly, blood is a rich source of iron, magnesium, vitamin D, and other viable macronutrients. Thus, its consumption confers important nutritional benefits to the people who use it, particularly during periods of food shortage, as it can be updated without having to slaughter any of the animal stock. Blood can easily become a means for microorganism development and thus threaten health. For this reason, it cannot be stored fresh and must be consumed immediately after its collection. Alternatively, it can be cooked or it can be dehydrated and consumed as a powder. Blood has an intense metallic taste. It's also sweet. When added to various dishes, depending on the other ingredients present, it usually adds a sweet taste in dishes. Pig's blood is favored for its sweeter, lighter flavor, while beef's blood is not favored because it can gain. In traditional, in traditional Western cultures, blood is not used as such, but as an ingredient in meat products and various dishes. Of the earliest writer mention of blood as a culinary ingredient, is a verse in Homer's Odyssey which describes an animal stomach filled with fat and blood being cooked. Melazomos, or black broth, is a well-known ancient dish with blood. This is a sustenance food that Spartan men typically ate in their common Sicilia. According to Plutarch, the main ingredient of Melazomos were pig's blood and vinegar. It seems that Melazomos was not at steam outside of Sparta. It was viewed down by Athenians who consider it very inferior in taste. Also, melasomos was thought to be a heavy dish, and in order to manage with digesting, one had to perform physical exercise after consumption. From classical and Hellenistic Greece, we know a couple of recipes made with blood. Athenaeus, in his Dipnosophiste, mentioned two dishes. The kreokakavos, a dish made of chopped chunks of meat, blood, and fat, cooked in sweetened broth, and another con blood contained this was Mima. According to Athenius, Mima was eaten in Hellenistic times. Mima was made with, with the sacrificial, with the tender minced meat from any sacrificial animal or from chicken, liver and offal with blood, and several seasonings, including vinegar, silphium, cumin, thin leaf, thin seed, and coriander. Athenaeus pointed out that with a popular delicacy, animal blood was considered as being tough on digestion, and particularly so the blood of cattle. Blood is a key component of many European traditions and foods. As you can see in the current slide, this includes soups, sausages, cakes, and several other salty and sweet delicacies. In modern Greece, however, blood is treated with suspicion, and the majority of people consider it unfit for consumption. This has become evident also by the fact Greeks cook their meat almost invariably well done and hardly ever rare. The blood taboo is not unique to Greece, but it's widespread 
in Eastern Mediterranean cultures. Historically, the taboo of blood as, as uh, food stems from the prohibition find a few biblical passages with the most characteristic a warming in Leviticus which states that if an Israeli consumes meat with its blood, he will be expelled. Thus, in order to follow the blood prohibition, Jews allowed the blood to slaughter at animals to drain as much as possible. This is a kosher way to preparing a meat. In Christianity, we know of some fragmentary prohibitions within the Eastern Orthodox Church, however no official. Generalized prohibitions against the consumption of blood has been imposed. Blood, though treated with prejudice in every life, in Eastern Orthodox Church and other Christian churches, it constitutes a spiritual food which is eaten during the Holy Eucharist. In the New Testament, Jesus urges the Christians to eat and drink his flesh and blood. During Eucharist, blood is symbolically consumed in the form of the red wine. In modern Greece, the ancient term emathies, from the Greek word for blood emma, continue to be used to describe local traditional pork sausage in Crete and other islands of the Aegean Sea. But the modern emathies, also known locally as omathies or mathies, do not contain any blood as, one of the, as they used in the past centuries. From anecdotal evidence, however, we know that in some deprived regions, mainly insular areas, the tradition of using blood in cookies survived well after the introduction of Christianity. In the second half of my presentation, I will present the first study we conducted to document the preparation of food which have blood as their main ingredient on a Greek island. The first study was accomplished during the summer months of 2014 on the Greek island of Tinos. Tinos belonged to Cyclades, a complex of, la of 33 islands of the Aegean Sea. The field study <coughs> was part of an ongoing, large epidemiological study which aimed to assess the dietary habits and other lifestyle parameters of aged people who live on the islands of the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean Island Study. Data were collected via observations and interviews with villages. A semi-structured questionnaire which seeks information on food habits was used. All interviews were conducted by one of the authors of the paper, Mr. Alexander Foscolo. Besides, one side observation and interviews, information on folklore and the history of Tinos was retrieved at the library of the Catholic Arts Diocese in Tinos. In the study results, 20 elder, 20 elder women and men, permanent residents of the villages Xinara, Tripotamos, Steni, Cardiani, and Isternia, were interviewed. The five villages have similar demographic and physical and environmental characteristics. Participants' age range between 65 and 92 years. Half of them were to the Orthodox dogma and half of them to Catholicism. Catholism is widespread among the inhabitants of Tinos. Due to half millennium Venetian and Xenopan occupation <coughs> from 12th to 18th century. Half of the participants were actively working as farmers Six women report housekeeping as their main occupation, and another four were self-employed craftsmen and craftswomen. Most of the participants were officially retired at the time they were interviewed. During the interviews, the participants provide detailed information on their current and past practices in terms of agricultural activities, food production, culinary methods as well, and dietary preferences. Their testimonies document that the culinary use of blood was common in Tinos till the recent past. Participants report three distinct foods made from blood, the mortadella, the fried blood, and the blood sausage. More specifically, all 20 participants report that they recall the taste of blood-contained dessert, the mortadella, and most of them could also recall its recipe as well. Most of the participants also recalled the warm dish fried blood. Finally, Six women mention that they know how to make blood sausage but do not make it anymore. The participants report that the blood sausage and the fried blood are always made with swine's blood and the fried blood with either swine or kite's blood. From the three foods, only mortadella was still prepared by a few of the participants. The mortadella is a sweet dessert. To make the mortadella, the fresh blood, before it coagulates while still liquid, is mixed with great walnuts, grape must, bread crumbs, and cinnamon, and then wrapped in the filo dough. The little rats are then fried and thus can be preserved 
for several days. The mortadella was considered by, by the participants to be very tasty dessert associated with dear memories. The term mortadella probably derives from the Italian word della morte, which means from death and maybe applying the slaughtered animal. On Tinos, the preparation of blood-contained dishes was done in the past in conjunction with the ritual slaughter of a pig known in Greece as Hirosphagia. It is a food custom that holds its roots in antiquity, and in past decades it represents an important food tradition. The blood-contained foods were the first to be prepared. Cuts of fresh meat, the liver, and other organs also fried and barbecued in the fireplace and eaten right away. Over the next few days, several products were prepared from this pork meat, such as sausages, siglino, luja, pork jelly, and others to be consumed throughout the year. The hirosphagia was typically done in the, month in the month of December before Christmas. One of the blood-contained foods, the blood sausage, is identical to the blood sausage known in France as Boudin Blanc and Boudin Nuit. It seems that this delicatessen came to Tinos with the French Ursuline nuts who had come to Tinos to teach at the French Catholic school, which the Ursuline institution ran since uh, 1704. Local girls attended to the school and, among other subjects, were trained in cooking and helped the kitchen. As some of our female participants report, they continued to make this type of sausages after they left the French school in their own households. However, we observe no difference between Orthodox and Catholic participants with regard to recall, to recall either blood sausage or any of the other two blood-containing foods. In conclusion, Consumption of blood was widely spread on Tinos through the first decades of the 20th century, studying as one aspect of a traditional pig slaughtering. A Venetian, a Venetian influence and the fact that a large portion of the island inhabitants were Catholic may explain our finding of blood used as human food in Tinos, surviving among a few elder housewives till current time. Nowadays in Tinos, same as all over Greece, blood contained foods and dishes are infrequent and black is viewed by the younger generation with prejudice and dislike. Recently, blood recently, recently, blood has made its appearance in restaurants of Manhattan, New York, Los Angeles and other cities as a culinary novelty. In the webpage of Bon Appetit, someone can read how some popular American chefs have recently introduced blood as one of their favorite cooking ingredients. The chefs add blood to make broths richer and intensify their color. For instance, when preparing Thai style noodles, to rehydrate corn flour when making tortillas, or to enhance the Spanish style sausage croquettes with a sweet metallic taste. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you very much, wonderful. Uh, the vampire legend embodies the, the contradiction of nourishment and of being forbidden at the same time. Yes. Uh, the, 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 uh, well, the, well, that's it. The <laughs> vampire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the islands of the Mediterranean and also in Greece, uh, the blood, uh, it's uh, it's not used as a food like the Western other uh, cities. Uh, so, of course, <laughs> if you are the blood, yeah. they will say that you're one guy. Christ told us to, to drink his blood, but not anybody else's. <laughs> <laughs> they use it in the form of red wine. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, but transubstantiation. Yes. The Catholics say it literally yes. turns into the blood of Christ. Yes. It still tastes like red wine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first gentleman, uh, first uh, has a sweet and metallic taste <laughs> because of the iron. Uh, Odor, um, if you might say a little bit about how you got interested in studying uh, the, or studying slash recording the use of blood in, in Greece and historically, and and, and um, as well as today or, or re recent history, and maybe use that also to reflect on why. Um, at least in many Western countries, people are so fascinated by the consumption of blood. As, as you put it at the beginning, nutritionally, it's 
very similar to an egg. And um, you could imagine if, and which an egg itself is not necessarily like, it's a little bit of an odd thing to eat, no way, you know, it may be more so, more so than blood, you know, because you have to like get the chicken to lay the egg and you to eat these chickens just to get there. So I mean, it, it's, it's, and you imagine some of the slides you had of the way the blood is prepared, if you had, if you had slides and they say that they had a scrambled egg and they had the boiled egg and they had, you know, people would wonder like, this is, is in particular, so why, is, why are we fascinated with blood in the way that we aren't fascinated with, uh, with the preparation of an egg? Yes, uh, for sure. <coughs> uh, we can say that uh, blood is a superfood if it's uh, comparable to egg. But uh, <coughs> people uh, look at blood uh, with prejudice and dislike because of the form of blood. For example, uh, in the Mediterranean, if you said uh, if you order fried blood, it's uh, it's kind of difficult to 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 accept it. Uh, maybe it's because of the of uh, all that situation around blood. It's not used as food uh, at all. But it's uh, for sure it's uh, very nutrient. Maybe. Um. I have a question that's inspired by your talk, um, but excuse me for being cross-cultural. Uh, actually, it's aimed at the chair, uh, if I may. Um, there's an intense conversation going on between me and Paul Buell here about uh, blood prohibitions in China. Yes. Um, and um, mm. as far as I know, there's no blood prohibition before the arrival of the Mongols um, and uh, Islam mm -hmm. in China. Now, thinking through that in terms of a medical context, the spirit, in the same way as we've seen in the European context, resides in the blood. Okay. And it resides, uh, and qi also resides in the blood and the heart. But in early China, what I do know is that it's okay to eat qi. Okay, that's that standard kind of cultivation practice. I wonder if it's okay to eat spirit as well. Yes. Um, uh, the blood, the f the blood containing foods. Uh, it was not that uh, something uh, started from Tinos. Uh, for example, uh, the Medi study, the study on the Mediterranean islands, uh, it was a part of an ongoing uh, large study with uh, many islands. But only on Tinos uh, we found that kind of uh, disease. Uh, it's because of the Venetian influence and that for many centuries uh, the population live together, and the Christians, the, the Catholics, and all that, they, they were part for having that kind of uh, blood containing foods in their menus. That's why they, they use it. Also, uh, in the other cultures, the other cities in China also, it's because of the, uh, some uh, Orthodox and Catholic uh, dogma that they did that uh, prohibition. <laughs> okay. Yes? Um, yes, the draining of blood from animals is, is actually a, a way of preserving the meat because the blood goes off much more quickly. Um, so the, the meat stays sweeter as well. Um, I'm just wondering whether you've actually read um, John Seymour's works. He's a British guy who went back into self-sufficiency back in the 70s and is, as far as I know, still doing it. But he's actually written a whole series of books and his basic one, Self-Sufficiency, which was published in um, early 70s, uh, actually has um, a description and recipes on how to prepare blood after slaughtering pigs, particularly pigs, and so on. So that could be, it might relate to your experiences because obviously the Venetian trade came west as well as went eastwards. Uh, yes, it's true. Also, blood has a sweet taste, and uh, as I told, uh, recently used in uh, uh, for many chefs uh, worldwide mm. uh, as a culinary novelty, and they used to prepare uh, some foods like the Thai style noodles or tortillas, uh, they give the sweet and metallic taste and also used uh, as a cooking ingredient. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, do the young people on Tinos 
give any explanation themselves for why they don't like eating the foods made of blood. Uh, uh, was that was that in did that come into the survey? Uh, I think it's uh, the same. Uh, yeah. The same. Uh, the, the first question about vampires. <laughs> <laughs> because I could, I could ask the same question by my own family. There, there, there is beautiful boudin noir made around us. Wonderful makers of boudin noir. But if I, if I buy them, I am the only person that can make them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. In uh, all Greece, uh, the found it uh, with uh, prejudice and dislike and they don't yeah. use that kind maybe, of... Maybe perhaps partly an influence from the rest of Greece and, and perhaps because there is more communication yes, it's nationwide. Yes, yes, it, it was a, for the mix of the population. Yes. Yes, yes. that's good. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Ah. <coughs> uh, is the recent uh, taboo of anti-Semitism related to the perhaps something more to do with the fact that the blood is a reminder as to exactly where the meat and the blood itself is coming from and that it is in fact coming from an animal being killed. Um, because now we're increasingly separated from where our food comes from and it seems to be the case, especially with younger people, that I'm a reminder that, that meat comes from the death of an animal is just odd. And Yes, it, it's not so ecological. Uh, it, it's because they believe that uh, they will be sick if they <laughs> eat uh, blood, uh, for sure. <laughs> it's it's a prejudice like that. Uh, that's it's not. It's dislike uh, for, for eating. Well, I mean, it might not necessarily be conscious, but is that perhaps where that belief arises from? Yes, uh, but uh, the before they eat it, they cook it. So uh, most of them, they know that uh, the blood is not uh, existing, the ingredients of the, of the food. Uh, so maybe you're right, because <laughs> the, the blood came from the death animal, but uh, also it's a prohibition. Yeah, I was thinking more in terms of the process of killing the animal and seeing the blood as part of that Yeah, yeah may, maybe you're right also. Okay. But it, it's not just blood. I mean, what happens in modern sensibility is the rejection of all non-muscle meat. Mm. You yes. know, so it's also it's tripe, it's brains, it's uh, uh, rotters. So blood is just one more thing of the kinds of things that are rejected in the kind of modern sensibility. Yes. <laughs> there are also some tribes in Africa, they use it. As their main form, but no, in, talking in the about Western countries, it's not in, yes. in Europe. And yes, America. <laughs> it's not this. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, can we can we uh, thank you and then <laughs> <laughs> and we can hold.